What are we doing today, Don? You're moving this air intake point so that we can mess with the steam vents. Okay. This cap is in the way. It's got a nice ring to it. It does. To gain access to this steam vent, we need to remove this wire. How does it work? Is there a release? Well, we have a release right here. It's a tube? I thought it was wiring. Okay, why don't you explain how to release those? Okay, so you push this little lever here, like so. Let's assume it's locked on. Now, how do you release it? This LS9807 ERL, let's see what's in here. Ah, yes. It is our new steam vent ports. Okay. This is a 19R972. And there's another one. And this is a 19R985 that goes in this guy. And here are some 5R244-2AA bolts to hold it down. You're looking at the Fregola part 482603BL. BL is for black. It is a type of T. There's a 1 8 NPT fitting right here and dash 3A in here and dash 3 in here. Okay. And we're removing the existing steam vent tubing. Okay. Holding the Earl's steam vent tube, he's going to show us how they go together. So this is where the actual steam flows in and out. This piece just holds it down onto the out steam vent. So this is the top and it fits into here just like so. You flip it over and you bring it on your engine and you set it down just like that. Okay, I'm thinking route like do and then do, just like that. Okay. That's it, that's 65 inch pounds. The T is going to come off straight like this, and he's going to be kind of far out. So I think you want more, like, more straight. What keeps this thing from rotating off of the steam hole? Just out of curiosity. I don't really understand how that works. Um, so it has a pin on its top that goes up into the holder piece, and I think that the O-ring kind of the o-ring and surrounding material kind of fit into a little divot where the steam vent is. And that is 65 inch pounds. Okay, now we're going to be installing our 1 8 NPT to dual dash 3 AN fittings. The Holly instructions had a line that said that there would be some things that would be easier to install before you mounted the water pump on the front of the engine. Now, <laughs> this was true. I looked at that and I go, every single one of the accessories is very easy to install after you've mounted the water pump. So what are they talking about? Of course, they didn't bother to say this. 
I think this is what they had in mind when they wrote that, but they couldn't just come out and say it. It's got to be secret. You, know, you got to, if you don't have to figure out anything yourself, you don't learn anything. Everybody knows that. Dylan discovered that a 3 8 wrench is the right size to just fit on there and, and grab this thing nice and tight. Is it getting kind of stiff? It's getting rather stiff. That's what we want. Well, then we got it. Yeah, clearly this would be easier. <laughs> Pre, pre AC compressor, pre mounting. Now don't go beyond horizontal. That's about horizontal. This is the 316th line that we're going to use Carlson H8350 NC. This is a little tubing straightener. I'm not sure it was strictly necessary, but I'm just the idea of having nice, straight, professional looking tubes really appeals to me. Look at this. This is nice and straight and professional looking. This tubing bender costs about $80. So if you want to have nice straight tubes, you know, you got to fork out the money. And it does say to roll it back and forth on it multiple times. But look at, look at the job it's doing. This is our very informal way to decide how long to make our tubing. I'm going to cut it about here. This is our first time ever using the cutting tool that came in my Master Cool flaring kit. This is how we're deciding where to do our tubing bend. It's going to be right about there. Dylan is an extremely experienced uh, <laughs> conduit bender. Yeah, extremely. And so I'm just trusting him to get this right. Now, all the guys who know anything say that you need to have a, a bender that's dedicated for the size that you have. It definitely does have to come up. See, like I would use this little run to come up and go over. Remember the flaring thing. Like, we need a straight section to grab onto to do flaring. I'm concerned that you're not going to leave us enough straight to, to do the flaring. I'm concerned Remember about that. Remember that we can bend this after flaring, but the reverse is not necessarily true. I am also concerned about that. How much am I coming up here? Not a ton. It's only a tiny amount. So it only takes a tiny, tiny bend. This is our first AN fitting we've ever done. And Dylan's going to illustrate the order the parts go on. You have to do this before flaring. So the tube nut goes on first, and then the tube sleeve. The tube sleeve, skinny part here, fat part here. If you look inside the end of the fat part, it's conical, as if to fit on the outside of a flare, which is exactly what it's going to do. The tube sleeve is not going around corners, at least not around a very sharp one. Okay, this is a Master Cool flaring tool. It's um, a pricey little guy. Step one is to load the tube into the die. Get the die all flush with the end and get the tube flush with the top surface of the die. Now, can you just visually check and make sure your tube is right? Okay, it is right, right? I mean, it's... It's right. Okay. So he's going to tighten it quite tight. Okay. And then he's going to bring the 37 degree cone up close to the the line that we are flaring and you will notice that we already have our AN tube nut on here so we won't have a sequencing problem okay then okay. he's going to tighten this valve okay it's flaring it I can see it flaring I guess when it gets firmer, that's when you know to stop. Ah, there it is. Okay. Should take it out. You don't have to back it all the way off. Yeah. Take it out and let's see what we got.
What was that? I think it's pretty good. A new challenge arises. How do you get it on there when you've got it the exact right size? I guess it's not too bad he managed it. Uh, in my opinion, that yeah. looks really good. It looks good. That's that getting pretty good. tight. Okay, here we are at the beginning of trying to figure out how to bend this line so that it can tie in here. Obviously, a lot needs to happen in a short amount of space. Just in case you were wondering, does this short little piece even have enough length to be flared and everything? Yes, it does. While it's still straight, you got to flare it. Put your tube nuts for both ends on. And then flare the other end. There is enough room for all of that as long as the thing is straight. Dylan is going to show this tube who's boss. Gingerly, of course, without putting any kinks in it. <laughs> One thing that makes this a little bit more challenging is it's a, it's got to be a three-dimensional curve. It, it can't just be a bend in one direction. I think this is an unauthorized use of this bender. It seems likely. Okay, Dylan is using an old mechanics trick. He's got sockets placed on the fittings to give him more leverage as he bends. Folks, I have no idea what he's trying to do here. But the important thing is that he know what he's trying to do. <laughs> One thing that really helped me while I was bending that line was to use deep sockets to extend the line so that I could get more torque on the line. I mean, other than that, I just sat there and worked and messed with it until it until it worked <laughs> you remember the torque value for these. Negative. Didn't think so. Negative. 